From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha. Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha. Enough with the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh. Bop. Okay, so let's take a look at the pond. First and foremost, like I said before, the mesh used to be on the underside, which gave it a lot less tension and rigidness. So put the chicken wire on the top side, reinforced it with the one by ones, pulled off the screen, put it on top of the chicken wire to keep the leaves and debris from going through and getting stuck between the two. So as you can see, everything bounces off nicely. So it ought to help in keeping the pond actually clean. Now I got my little hook up there that I use to keep it up. And as you can see, it is cleared right back up. Actually that plant is doing really nicely. If you remember, it was laying down in the water. I, I, I believe this is still, I forgot the name of it. I've been calling it like morning glory but it grows up towards the light. It's actually laying roots in the water and uh, growing up out of the water. So God is good. Let me tell you, life finds a way even when we don't know the way that it's going to take. It's taking a natural uh, position and actually adapting. That's the good thing about nature. Nature adapts. The chain sword, since it was kind of screwed up, I broke up, I removed a lot of the duckweed, which I'm going to do again because it multiplied real fast. I didn't realize how much was in that little corner until it got all stirred around. And uh, it's still early, so the pumps haven't cut on yet. They're starting to cut on. And one thing I've noticed is I can see the fish much more clearly now. Uh, paradise fish all over the place. Everybody's a little more active now because it's cooler. And the water is really clear. So, uh, my camera's lagging up a little bit here. I think it's doing an upgrade. But anyway, hornwort grew like crazy. Look how that's almost covered the styrofoam floating. And these Daniels about ready to breed like any day now. I mean, well, drop uh, their eggs and stuff. And I split up the chainsaw. There's some pieces there. Java fern never got touched because it was kind of the bottom part where it's really weighted down. I got a little plant weight on it. There's another piece over there that I screwed up. So you can bounce back. Sometimes things happen for a reason. <laughs> and I think the lesson in this was this plant, I got to get a better identification on it because it grows in my yard from uh, years ago, the old... Uh, person that lived here, not really old person, but the previous owner of the house back about a decade ago had this in her plants and it's been almost damn near impossible for me to get rid of it. It comes back all the time so I just said let me stick a piece in this pot and grow it out and I'm going to study the water before I try putting this in an aquarium because of course you got to make sure these plants uh, don't wilt and die off but look at this one it's growing up right back up to the screen again so maybe a good choice for aquatic plant I'll test it in a few of my uh, smaller tanks or quarantine tank and it's doing pretty nicely back here so give you guys a recoup and a redemption because that video footage was pretty cheap since it was on the old iPod touch and this one you can really see the colors of the fish they're out in the open a lot more, so I guess it was meant for me to do that. And the sword, that the sword plant, I found out attached to the rock that it was on because I tried to lift it out of the water. And it's like, hey, this is really heavy. It's attached to that rock, so it's doing nicely. Here's a piece of my little morning glory here, a branch, and it looks like it's about to root up. If you can see that, I'm trying not to drop my phone in the water. But yeah, just had a piece of the branch sticking in here like this. And it's actually rooting up. So, gonna be doing some uh, experimentation with the aquatic uh, plant life here and seeing what I can get out of that. But uh, it's not just about fresh water, because I know a lot of you guys uh, 
saltwater people and you know you look at the videos because I do both saltwater and freshwater but it's about learning from mistakes and sometimes you got to make mistakes in order to learn the correct lesson not just learn the lesson but learn the correct lesson is to a let your fish tell you what they need and watch them and take notes because sometimes taking notes is the best way to document and learn. So I know A, animals that I don't think are back here are back here. And B, the plant clarity was probably directly related to the way the plants, well, not plant clarity, but water clarity the way the plants were situated in here and they were going through like a spurt. The tannins in the water made it really hard to see. And I gotta say, the water's much clearer now. I mean, I took a lot of the duckweed out and there wasn't the duckweed on the top of the water, but I guess the, releasing the tannins and everything else, I had a lot of decaying leaves that I added earlier that probably took a while for them to break down. I'm gonna do some tests on the water a little later just to get the pH and see if there's any ammonia traces or anything in here that I could uh, bring you up to speed on. Because I haven't tested this water. I gotta tell you, I never test my ponds. I kinda let the fish tell me what they want, their active activity, uh, activity levels and plant growth tell me what they want, which is really lazy and a cop out. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. I'll post those readings on my Instagram channel, Be From Brooklyn on Instagram. And uh, and yeah, things have bounced back. So that's pretty cool. You can see where I've reinforced this uh, chicken wire. It's really rigid, so if something wants to get in here, it's gonna have to really want to get in here. I still gotta remove those staples from the old placement of the chicken wire before I end up scratching myself on it. And uh, everything's starting to come into bloom. So things are looking good. And if you guys are uh, struggling out there with this heat wave here in New York, my heart goes out to you. There's no way I can, no way I can really handle that with a pond other than, thank God, I have it under the shade of my grapevine. So as the grapevine grows ridiculously, I get more shade for the pond. <laughs> so the humidity does really kill me, but I am going to be adding water uh, as evaporation and the plants do use up a lot of the water in here. So keep that in mind also. So until next time, I'll cut this short seven minutes. I want it short and sweet. Happy 4th of July. Uh, thank you for all of you guys in the service, active duty, military, police, firemen, everybody that do what you do and don't get a lot of thanks. I want to say thank you on this day of independence. And uh, love, peace, and hangry. So I'm going to be out. Don't eat too many hot dogs. And if you do, I hope you got toilet paper. So this is D signing out, baby. I'm out. Hello, little fishies. Yeah, no more bad animals going to bother you. Right, not now.